actually start recording. Uh, Braconid wasps, is that what they're called specifically? Uh, are much better for your garden than the caterpillar. They just aren't as cute. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't know if they actually sting humans. Um, uh, it might be male, female dependent, but uh, the stinger, I think on females, has been uh, modified to become an ovipositor, which is a structure that deposits eggs into something. In the case of these wasps, it's going to be the, the skin of, like, inside of a caterpillar. So I'm going to see if I can kind of pull apart one of these and put it on a slide. We're not going to see much. It is going to be a little bit disappointing. Um, so I'll warn you right now. But it's still interesting nonetheless. Maybe if I'm really good at it, maybe I can kind of pull apart a pupa. So at this stage of their development, um, wasps just like like flies when they go and actually caterpillars they have similar sort of uh developmental uh processes the pupa is essentially a hard shell on the outside of hardened epidermis um, there's still active nerves active brain everything but a lot of the tissues that were the larva um, begin to break down and tissues that were set aside earlier in development um, called imaginal discs will start to sort of unfold, start to uh, uh, develop. And so if we pull apart a pupa, we might actually be able to like spill everything out and find all of its discs. And these are the things that become the adult. So when you look at a larva of like a, an insect, it becomes like a winged insect. Um, if you were to pop it open, the larva itself contains the adult tissue that's not developed. The larva doesn't wholesale become the adult. Only certain tissues do. Um, they aren't aggressive. The females can sting through the ovipositor. Didn't know that. Uh, but only if they feel absolutely the absolute need to defend themselves. And they're they're quite small too. I mean, uh, the wasps aren't going to grow after they, they come out of their pupa. So after they eat clothes, that's the word for that. Um, so, and these are very, very tiny. So I'm going to try to take one or two and put it on the slide and just kind of see what we can see under the microscope. And then I'm going to leave this whole thing alone. Oh, oh no, the poor caterpillar. Oh, it's trying to do something. I feel bad. I, I kind of feel bad for the caterpillar. Um, should I feed it? I mean, at this point, I don't think the larvae are feeding on the caterpillar anymore, but the caterpillar has gone un undergone a hugely stressful event. So I almost feel like I should try and feed the caterpillar and see what happens. Although, if I don't catch the wasps as they close, they might just turn around and say, oh, look, caterpillar, and either eat it or um, attempt to lay more eggs into it. Oh, poor thing. Okay, I'm gonna pick off one of its parasites and then probably close this off. I'll pick two just in case. So you can actually, oh, I lost it for a second. I don't want wasps, even if they're small and fairly harmless. I don't want them flying around my office. It looks like rice, but does it taste like rice? You would have to gift an unbelievable number of subs for me to pop one of these into my mouth. Even though they're little tiny, they are very small. In fact grain of rice is is about the scale we're talking about i do not mind other people eating insects i do not mind the fact that i definitely have eaten insects before either on purpose or not on purpose i just don't want to eat one Ugh, gross okay 
just gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, oh, that's what I was gonna point out. If you can kind of see, if I zoom in a little bit, I'm gonna have to reorient. And I know this is super shaky, so sorry about that. So dead center, right about, uh oh right about here where that red arrow is that's one of the holes that the larvae dug its way out of the caterpillar from uh it looks like they actually kind of healed up pretty nicely um that's why maybe i'll try to feed this poor caterpillar uh i might have to also very carefully very very carefully because i also don't want to harm the wasps is kind of go down here to now where the arrow is pointing and just kind of break away some of the silk because I think it's actually pretty pretty well glued down um, with all that silk that they made. Um, I don't think you can really get much of anywhere. Uh, Valent of Science has eaten scorpion before. The horrible part is he doesn't remember how it tasted. How can someone eat a scorpion and forget what it tasted like? Well, I've heard like a lot of insects just kind of taste nutty so they're super full of protein <clears throat> and uh i think they often taste like what they eat to a degree and i feel like the insects that people usually eat feed on other edible material but yeah i don't know why you would how you would forget what it tastes like and you can get you can like eat scorpion um when i was in albuquerque a couple like a month ago now at this point there were lots of like scorpions embedded in like candy that you could eat. I did not want to do that. Okay, I'm gonna close this off. And then we are going to switch over to my microscope, but that's gonna take just a little bit. Okay, let's look at, uh, what is this? I also learned today how I can't spell the word caterpillar. Hello, Micro. Welcome. We were just uh, taking a look at my, my one caterpillar that became many caterpillars. Uh, anyways, this is what I was hoping. I was so hoping that on stream we'd maybe be able to catch it eclosing into this or pupating out. Uh, very much not though uh the caterpillars are quite destructive for my garden but i actually quite like the moths we get hawk moths all the time they're huge too okay i'm just gonna try and rearrange my my camera so we can actually look at the microscope And for people who have maybe not been in the last stream or two, we are slowly getting emotes. Um, right now, I think all the ones that I have submitted are actually accepted. Um, the only problem is that I'm not at a level where I can have <clears throat> free emotes, unfortunately. So you have to be a subscriber to use them. And I don't really, I'd rather people be able to use them than not. Okay, why? Did I jump scare you? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I bet I did, you coward. <laughs> You make me sick. Your weakness is pathetic. I have no one to blame but myself. Um, is this a home office or <laughs> is this a <laughs> okay? Uh, is this a home office or a work office? This is my home office. Okay, and I see everyone laughing. Yeah, that uh, the sound on that like blows out speakers so I had to like tone it down a little bit I think it's even 
still a little bit too loud. Oh my gosh. This is the truest reason for biology bucks. Well, there's other less intrusive things that you could spend them on that don't scare me half to death. Although, again, I'm the one who put it there, so I'm the only one to blame. Alright, sorry, but there is a uh, slight problem with my microscope, so I'm going to have to try and sit here and fix it for a second. Uh, your husband was sitting next to you, and he, he just jumped. Okay, fixed it. There was no problem. I am just incompetent sometimes. Uh, anyways, so to whoever was asking, I'm sorry, this is a home office. I have a microscope that was who is that? Who is it? Who is it? Twitch guy too. Um, so this is a a home office that I have set up. You can barely see it, but I actually have a C-shaped desk because I bought. I have two of the same identical desk. I bought one from a friend who was getting rid of it, um, and then I have a microscope just because it was like gifted to me via a chain of people not wanting a microscope. And then, so, you know, slow buildup of stuff over time. Uh, you, me, have such a, I guess I'm the only one talking, have such a calming voice. You, I wish you could do ASMR or work for audible books. Thank you, I guess. Um, also, welcome, Embis. <laughs> I'm sorry your caterpillar friend was brutally murdered. Yeah, but now for content, we can talk about it. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, you know, Twitch guy, I have been sort of told that too. I hate the sound of my own voice, so I don't ever believe it. Uh, in grad school, we have to give kind of like big uh, presentations to fellow grad students um, near the end of our, our time there before we actually defend our thesis. And several of my evaluation forms, rather than telling me like, oh, you know, you could be more clear if you explain this this way or this that way, uh, they were like, you have such a soothing voice. I, and I don't ever believe it. Embus, how is your, how is your uh, Sunday going? Science ASMR, I bet you could read papers you have to read anyhow and just read them that read that out loud and people would pay the money and learn i mean i could try i could make that a reward read a paper out loud i think it'd be super boring personally but you know if someone wants to spend the points um oh yeah manoguard good clarification it wasn't murdered it's actively being murdered uh you think you found a paper on how the BRCA virus, wait, do they infect them with a virus as well? Uh, you'll post it on Discord. Awesome, awesome. You'd tune in every night to hear me read a paper. All right. Uh, everyone hates their own voice. True. I do understand that. We get used to how we hear it from inside our heads. <laughs> oh, 
god. Okay, well, I'm going to write down science ASMR and figure out how to implement that if people really want it. I mean, if you want me to just sit here and read a paper for views, follows, and subscriptions, sure, why not? I think, I mean, we're about to murder something for science right now. Uh, so when the female wasp, oh, and thank you for looking all this up, Mana Guard. I mean, I don't know that much about them, and I didn't bother beforehand um, to look it up. The female wasp carries it in her ovaries, the virus, and uh, infects when the, se uh, uh, can't read. So now you've told me about how I should do ASMR, and now suddenly I can't read. Ovaries and infects when the eggs are deposited. Uh, as soon as you posted the first, as soon as I posted the, posted the first pick, you went down the rabbit hole and stayed there. How soothing can you make? Okay. We'll see if I try. I feel like I'm not going to be able to do it, but I'll try. Uh, it wasn't murdered. It was actively being murdered. Meh. Five out of ten. <laughs> okay. All right. So maybe if I turn this off. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So we are looking at this fuzzy little thing right here. This is the cocoon. And inside of the cocoons are the pupa of two of the larvae that went ahead and are actively murdering our caterpillar. My caterpillar, our caterpillar. It does look like a dismembered Q-tip, except that it's about the size of a grain of rice. Probably tastes like nuts, and I absolutely would not eat it. Um, even for like... See, I don't like doing things I don't want to do. Whoa. Wow. Thank you, Embus, for the uh, uh, the gifted sub to... Oh, Twitch guy, too. <laughs> you needed the emotes. I said that like I was a detective in a murder mystery. Well, it's not really a mystery. Uh, I've got two... Well, I have two of the suspects right here. And then there's about, you know, one to two hundred sitting off to my left. I just want to see how, what else we, what other detail we can get on this. Ooh. It's, I mean, the silk is actually really pretty. So I think its head is up here because it's kind of the last thing that it spits out. <laughs> We've apprehended the suspects. And now just like. Well, I don't know if I want to joke about this, but like now we're going to kill them. I don't know. That's not what that's not what a proper justice system should do. So, Harry, you have the urge to shave it. Well, I'm going to see if um, I'm so I'm I'm pretty good with little tiny forceps. But uh, it's really hard with this microscope because it's flipped the way I'm like looking and doing things. But I am going to try to like break apart some of the, the silk and see if we can get to the actual pupa underneath it. Um, although, before I do that, I actually saved one in ethanol the other day because I was thinking ahead. So we can actually look and sort of see what it looks like by itself. Hydrate. Oh. Oh no. This is very embarrassing. Uh, I forgot. I forgot water. I forgot to get a water. Uh, you know what? I actually probably should go get some water, or my voice is gonna get super raspy. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not gonna drink the ethanol either, because I actually lied. It's not ethanol. It's isopropanol. I'm not gonna drink it. All right, so this is one of the larvae. It it dead. It died because I, I put it in isopropanol. It's probably also going to dry out very quickly, but I'm going to just zoom in on its like head area. Actually, this is a pretty good. This is a pretty good view of it. 
you can see a lot of a lot of detail. I'm going to take a picture for the Discord. Boop. Uh, I'm going to go get some water because I don't want to not let you redeem that. Okay. So everyone e examine this for the next like three minutes while I run downstairs, grab some water, and then run back. Okay, I'll be right back. Also behave. I'm back. Uh-oh. Fun fact about that one, it actually freezes everything on, like on the page or on the screen, but only if I'm on my main streaming one. Um, okay, let's see, what, what did I miss? Call it ahead. Someone ID this critter. Um, so Manigard already pulled out what exactly this is. Um, so it is a specific type of parasitic wasp that infects uh, or infects, attacks, parasitizes um, hawk moth caterpillars. And then, uh, oh, Embus, you, you gifted another sub? That's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I wasn't here. You can't behave. The Slurm Queen. Uh, you see a little Red shark alert. mouth. Whoa. <coughs> Embus is being far, far, far too kind, but thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I'm sure all the people who you're gifting subs to also appreciates it. Uh, let's see. Red alert. Oh my gosh. <coughs> I'm just going to go ahead and drink my water. <laughs> emotes for everybody <laughs> wow thank you so much now everyone is obligated to use emotes as much as possible okay okay wait I'm still behind still behind uh, yeah the mouth we're looking at the mouth I see that someone had a question about the mouth if I just kind of scooch us right here, it's also drying out, which is actually making it look a little bit easier to see, a little bit easier to see, look a little bit easier. Those two dark things right there, those are it's like little grasper mouths or like little mouth hooks. That's what they're called. And as it's drying out, you're seeing the segments even easier. Uh, can you tell us anything about how your research is going? My research is going good to great depending on what we're talking about uh cloning is cloning so that's molecular cloning is never fun but also the the thing i'm trying to make is going to be kind of fun and i'm waiting through some height for some high throughput sequencing so so genomics work to come back so basically put a bunch of dna in a tube more or less wrapped a whole bunch of money around it and sent it off to i think china to be sequenced uh, yeah, yeah. Mandibles. Um, I actually don't know if they're technically mandibles. We call them, I'm sure they're mandibles because that's probably a more generic term for insect mouth parts. Um, in Drosophila, we definitely call them mouth hooks though. <laughs> Wrap money around it. I mean, that's kind of what we do. This thing is drying out. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll, oh, oh, sorry. I left. 
Maybe I'll come back to it and see what happens after it's dried out for a little bit. But you can actually, the drying out process kind of makes the segments easier to see. That's cool. You know, it actually doesn't have very many other features to it, which I don't know if I really would have expected that or not expected it, depending on, I don't know. Because the, uh, so the organism that I study, Drosophila melanogaster, their larvae aren't embedded in type of an, inside of another living organism. So they have a lot more, what do I want to say, like structures on the outside to help them crawl around and breathe and do all that sort of stuff. Um, parafilm works better than money. Well, okay, there was some parafilm involved for safety reasons, but, you know, I got to slip them the, uh, you know, the cost of the order at some point. Uh, your students have been hooked on the idea that editing the genomes of humans is possible and getting your genome sequenced, LOL. Oh, well, uh, absolutely. I mean, it is absolutely possible to edit the genomes of humans as we've, as we've talked about. Um, and hopefully someday we'll be able to look at my genome. I still haven't even received, received my kit yet. Uh, when I receive it, though, I'm just going to spit in the tube that they gave me and send it straight back. I'm not going to wait for a stream or anything like that. If you want to see me spit in a tube, I'll do that. Let's see. Okay. Anyways, little mouth hooks. So that's its head, body, its segments. It doesn't seem to have much in terms of... Yeah. Much of anything. Okay, let's go back to the ones that are actually still alive. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Whoa. Here they are. Spit in a tube, 5k <laughs> channel point redeem. <laughs> it wouldn't be spitting in a tube. I would say like simulate a DNA collection or something like that. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that is the mouth area up there and that is the, the butt area down there. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try really, really hard without squishing these guys. And I'm sorry that I can't get everything in focus. This is my lowest power magnification. I don't have a 1x objective, which sounds really silly. Uh, uh, but they're actually pretty expensive relative to what I wanna spend. Simulate DNA collection is def for, defo for another site doctor. Um, yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, if maxi prepping your salivary gland products. <laughs> I don't actually know what process they use to get, you know, like cheek cells out of a out of a spit sample. I should look that up sometime. See, that's what I'll do. I'll look up what they're actually doing once I send it off and we can talk about the process that'd be kind of fun not actually watch me do part of it because it's super boring although we could always look at cheek cells on the microscope I can do that pretty easily um, if one edits someone's genome how would you get every cell in the body to get the new genome that is the question uh, twitch guy that is the problem that we can't solve at the moment uh, if you are an adult with lots and lots of cells in your body, um, and you get some sort of CRISPR-based, uh, like uh, 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 CRISPR-based, what am I trying to say? Method to change a group of cells or something like that, you cannot be sure that all of your cells will change. We were looking at some papers last time, and it was a super low percentage of cells, even when they took like stem cells out of the body, tried to modify them and then put them back in, the total number was like something between like one and 10%. So at the moment, we can't do that. Um, but yeah, what Altmus Frizzle is mentioning is like talking about embryos. So embryos that have, you know, one to hundreds of cells, way easier. Um, and then also, yeah, so some diseases don't require you to change all of the DNA. Sickle cell, um, I'm sure, is probably one of them where, oh, actually, no, it is one of them. I remember this paper um, where if you, for some types of sickle cell, 
if you only relieve some of the, the symptoms by providing properly shaped blood cell types, you alleviate a lot of the disease. Um, so you can kind of get around that. So sometimes like a couple cells is good enough. Um, inject into marrow? Uh, yeah, so Embus. Uh, so one of the papers that we were looking at was um, taking bone marrow from a patient attempting to modify it so that it would have this specific mutation um, uh, to help make that the recipient uh, have a lower chance of, of getting infected with HIV. Um, and then they would, the, the idea was then they would re-inject those cells into the bone marrow of the patient, then they would be have some amount of HIV resistance. They had a low percentage of the number of cells that they were actually able to do. What, you mean you can't just inject lip, lip, lipofectamine or lipofectamine? I don't think I've ever said that word out loud. Uh, no, probably not. You probably also want to stray away from something like digitonin, things like that. Anything that punches a big hole into the cells to make super easy you know, transfection in the lab, probably don't want to do that to a, a patient. Okay. So I'm going to try and I'm going to fail to very carefully... Oops. Uh, pick apart some of the silk off of this off of this larva. So I know you can't see anything very delicately. I, I, I hear the, or I can read through that sarcasm. Uh, actually, one thing I've already learned is that it's actually quite a hard casing around it. So I might have to be a little bit less delicate. Uh, also, hello, da David. Um, <laughs> man handles silk, boy. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so... What I think probably happened, and this isn't something I thought about, um, is when the larva, it was doing a couple things. As a, like, a little squishy larva, it went around and spit silk all over itself. Then inside of, inside of its silk cocoon, what it might have done is then shed its, its last layer of larva epidermis, you know, the skin, and then underneath that is the pupa. So when I'm like touching it right now, I feel a hard casing I'm hoping that's not the pupa, which it might be. If it's not the pupa, then I'm going to try and rip it open and see what happens, basically. Uh, so presumably they're breathing through the silk uh, like a little mask. Uh, yeah, actually, so depending on the, the, the insect, and I don't know what, what's true for this wasp, uh, it actually might not need that much oxygen, if any. I think they still need a little bit of, of oxygen. Um, so I think the outer cuticle lets a little bit in, but they actually don't need much. So they store everything they need inside of their bodies before they pupate. Uh, but that, that, that statement will sort of depend on the organism you're talking about. Uh, yeah, hi, David. How's it going to you? I hope your Sunday is going well. We're just trying to pick apart a wasp larva okay so i'm gonna go at this again i'm apologizing that you're not gonna be able to see what i'm doing but i'll try to get it in focus once i'm done i'm just gonna try to uh, a little bit more uh sternly go ahead and pull it apart Well, 
Uh, no, sternly doesn't mean I'm going to punch it. Sternly means I'm going to rip it completely in half. Uh, whoops, that's the good one. That's the dead one. There we go. So there's one half. Where's the other? One half and then... Why can't I find... There's the other half. Uh, we've done memory tests on wasp larva versus... Oh, have we done memory tests with wasp larva versus uh, grown wasp like they did with butterflies? Uh, probably not, but the process, the, the metamorphosis is probably like pretty similar. So the brain is something that is kept mostly intact, but uh, goes through quite a few changes. So I don't know that. We can look it up. Yeah, it's violent, but it is the best way to see it. So we are seeing on the bottom here. It's 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 hard to describe, but sort of that more tan color um, is the inside of the pupa. So I'm going to try to pull and see what comes out. Uh, if the imaginal discs and other things are more uh, are if they're attached to the epidermis at this stage of its development, we're not really going to get much, but I might as well try. I gotta move some stuff out of the way. The silk is very sticky. Oh, bad time for you to eat lunch. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm so close to getting like whatever is inside of this section out. Not quite though, not quite though. Almost. All right, I gotta wipe this off on my shirt. The silk is extremely sticky. <laughs> is this making everyone hungry? Got it. I got something. All right. I don't know. I don't know if that was on camera. I feel like we need either smaller hands or larger wasp eggs. Honestly, it's a. Uh, it's not the size. It's the setup. Uh, I can do this under a dissecting microscope where there's not all this stuff in the way, uh, and I'm not actually. And I can actually put my eyes like and look down the objective. Right now, I'm just kind of like using my phone. I've got all this stuff in the way. 
But we actually did get something out of it. So, unfortunately, it looks like it's a, <laughs> a bit underdone. So uh, I don't know that much about wasp metamorphosis. I was kind of expecting it to be more of a soup on the inside with free floating uh, discs, which are the organs that become the wasp uh, body later on. But clearly it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more thick. I'm gonna try to sort of poke this around and see if anything falls out. Okay, yeah, you wasp soup. Yeah, so unfortunately, not a ton, not a ton of structure that I'm seeing. So well beyond my ability to tell what we're looking at, unfortunately, because there is no structure. But it looks like some things kind of did come out. Oh, you clipped something? Awesome. Thank you. There's a bunch of... Oh, wait, hold on. Is that moving? No, not really. So if this were a fly, I would say that the things that we're looking at now, these little spherical things, um, hmm, there's too many and they're too small. I almost wonder if they're like fat bodies, like fat deposits. It's hard to tell. You know, something I could do is I could take this sort of fresh stuff, maybe out of the other half that I sort of discarded and slip it on another slide and put a slide cover over it, maybe even put a uh, like a cell stain on it and we can kind of see if we at least see like nuclei and stuff like that, which we should. There should be a lot of cells, but I'm just not sure exactly what we're looking at at this point. Oh, you clipped something? Awesome, thank you. Uh, back in the day, people were outraged about violence in movies and now we can watch a real autopsy on Twitch. Uh, I wouldn't call this an autopsy, more of a vivisection. You've been so de desensitized to this stuff after having a course with dissections that was always right before lunch. <laughs> yeah, and Alt Mr. I know you worked um, close to animals and you've worked in a slaughterhouse, so you agree with micro, yeah. Yeah, there's a certain amount of desensitization. I mean, this isn't so bad. It's just a, uh, a pale goo that if you didn't know what we were looking at, you would never be able to guess this was wasp tissue. A vivisection of vengeance. Um, a vivisection of understanding. Because uh, I, I don't I don't mind the wasps. I am just a tiny bit just a tiny bit annoyed that they killed my caterpillar, but they are sort of doing a service for my garden overall. Alright, I'm gonna get out a slide. And I'm going to try and grab the other goopy bit that I didn't crush, put it on, and then I'll put a cover slip on along with some some cell dye, and maybe we'll be able to check out some cells. Oops. So this part should also have the head if I had my my geography correctly of where we were.
uh, while I'm sort of, or while everyone's watching this, on the topic of things that are maybe a little bit more macabre, just wanted to remind everyone that on Wednesday, Nascent Novice will be on with me, and we'll be talking about some vampire stuff. So I will advertise that again later and on Discord. But please definitely stop by on Wednesday. Let's talk about blood, decomposition, feeding habits, all that sort of stuff. All right, I grabbed some goop. We'll see if this shows us anything interesting. You're working on your Nandor impression, the most important research first. <laughs> I agree. That is that is the most important thing for that stream. Is your ability to do a Nandor impression because I'm not good at impressions. Um, the one thing you never got used to was the smell, especially after dissecting a shark. The they store urea in their tissues. They have a faint smell of toilet that needs to be cleaned. That's disgusting. Uh, but I have a similar experience from dissecting uh, pigeons in high school. Just the smell of the pigeon and uh, like forma, formamide, formalin, formalin. It was, it, it smells exactly how um, turkey jerky, something I used to really like smells. Now I can't stand it. All right, I'm not really sure what this is going to show us, but we'll try it anyways. So this is just some of that tissue squished down. I'm just wondering if we'll see anything. Ooh. Not very carefully handled either, I should say. Prepping human skulls from freshly, from fleshy human skulls smells way too tasty and sawing into human bo bones smells like Fritos. Oh, okay, Embus, I did not know you had these experiences. It looks like a map of North America? Oh, the, the tissue we were just looking at. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I just don't think we're gonna see very much, but I wanted to check anyways. So we have these dark patches of cells. The stain did not work. The cells actually look pretty small. If you didn't know, body farms deflesh human skulls by popping them in crock pots. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have heard something similar to that. I mean, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, I have done. Um, I have not experienced this. Oh, gooey tissue. Um, I have not experienced this personally, but um, you know, apparently any type of meat 
smells a lot like barbecue if it's heated up enough, which is kind of disconcerting. I do not like to think about that. Well, I wish I could say that this was something like interesting and specific, but I really just took a bunch of wasp tissue and smushed it down under a slide. So this movement we're seeing is kind of a, it's kind of random, not anything fun. The wasp tissue looks beautiful. It does. It's uh, quite quite disorganized, though. I'm just kind of scanning for anything. I mean, like, the stain didn't really take very well. Here's a bit of muscle, though. I only know because of the... Uh... Oh, well, actually, maybe it's a, a tube of tissue. Looks like crystals. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Oh. Okay, actually, maybe we, yeah, I think we came upon something that's a little bit more structured than before. Yeah, what's the tube? I'm not sure. I think this is a tube, not muscle. Let me zoom out again. So they're all kind of leading to something that is utterly destroyed. Yeah, you can, as I zoom in and out, you can kind of see the striations. It actually is really pretty. Hi there. I took a screenshot for Discord. Um, so it's hard to tell. I don't, I don't know anything about these wasps. Um, tubes and insects are usually either um, tubes for breathing. If they're tubes that are lining their body, bringing air um, around their body. I don't know if adult wasps have them. So if they do, this is probably from the larva. Uh, in fruit flies, the larva have the tubes. I don't think adults have tubes. That or it's like part of the digestive tract. Although it's branching. I saw a branch before. <laughs> that would be kind of unusual in my mind, at least for, where to go? For a digestive tract. Ooh, that sounds awful, Micro. Ugh. I'm seeing more of this striation. <clears throat> So maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll take some of these uh, these wasp uh, pupa into work where I have the proper microscopes and uh, afterwards, like after I'm done with work for the day, maybe I'll try and dissect some out more carefully. I'll put them in some ethanol or something or on a slide and we can take a look at it later. What is What is this stuff? I have no idea. I have no idea what this stuff is. Because uh, I'm not seeing anything that has nuclei. Not that there aren't cells with nuclei. I just wonder if a lot of this is um, our lipid droplets. Larvae of any species are full of lipid. That's how they store um, all the energy that they require before they start, um, you know, going uh, pupating and going through metamorphosis. Like, you know, this, this thing, these right here, actually, where is my, okay, nope. I just tried to use a little quick filter. Yeah, they do look lippity, don't they? 
Very droplety. Whoops. Keep moving away from what I'm trying to look at. Uh, also, the cells are just probably quite small. You know, we've had good luck with single-celled organisms on stream, or small, multi-celled organisms. Uh, but really, the only cells that we can usually see are human cells, because they're quite big. Actually, just so people um, know what I'm talking about, and since I already was talking about it, why don't I take a cheek swab, and we can look at some cheek cells. Yeah, like this look all looks like lipid. This has got to be just lipid. Oops, that's the end of it. Do you think you can get pictures when you take it to work? Oh yeah, absolutely. Also, this is not a, a, a promise. I'm gonna try to, but I just don't know if I'll have time this week. And these things will probably be developed and, and end up being, uh, you know, wasps by next Sunday. I do want to know what these striations are, whether that's muscle or a tube or both, like a tube of muscle. Okay, I'm going to get some uh, cheek cells from myself. You wonder if the tubes are bits of silk? Yeah, maybe. Um, I, I think, I, I, I didn't point it out, but I think I had seen some like strands in the background. I think that was silk, uh, but who knows? I don't actually know. You really hope you have some stains at school because you're counting on that to show the kids some bacteria at work or at this week. Um, yeah, so I'm not good with which stains work with what, but I know that you can get like, um, so the stain I use is basically a treatment for like a fish disease. So I got it at a pet store. Um, there's two different types. Uh, like I think it's called malachite green is the other one. And the, this is methylene blue. Um, and then there is this website that I found at one point, but would need to search if I wanted to find it again, where it was someone literally going through like common uh, food dyes and things like that and trying to see if any worked as a stain for at-home microscopy. Oh yeah, you think you have some? Okay, that's at least something. All right, so let's see if I managed to get any cheek cells on here. Certainly hope so. I scratched the inside of my cheek enough. You scraped your cells with a blue popsicle stick last year and it worked just as well as staining them. That's funny. <laughs> Did you come up with that? Was that your idea? Because that's clever. There we go. Oh, already. 
already. Look, you can see how huge human cells are. At least my cells. Look at that. Look how beautiful this is. They're not even at the high of magnification. Cheek cells are huge. Let's get a little bit better. Oh, come on. There we go. I want to find one that's nice and flat and by itself. Ooh, looks like art. Science is art. Art is science. I don't know. Yeah, it does. I got so many because I was really scraping at it. Okay. Let's go to highest magnification after I turn up the brightness a little bit. Although my phone just compensates, which is kind of is annoying. Yeah, so um, the other thing, which if we want to talk about, I better get to it sometime soon that I wanted to talk about today was some biotechnology news that come out this week. This isn't focusing very well. Oh yeah, that's uh, one of my cells. Uh, so presumably when I get my DNA sequenced, these are the cells that I'm gonna uh, get sequenced. And are, is that just stuff or is that bacteria from my mouth? Gross. I think it's just stuff. Look at the organelles. Yeah, you can definitely see, you know, I, I swear you can just barely see like filaments on the inside. And then, yeah, of course, the little, little dots. I wonder if those are mitochondria. Those have to be mitochondria. Yeah, that's an epithelial cell. All right. Yeah big flat epithelial cells I saw I think I have a huge patch over here on the side might have scraped up my mouth a little bit too much I would love to see oh wow yeah this one's big I like the big flat ones I would love to see, I don't even know if that particular layer goes through mitosis or if these are terminally, or, or not terminally differentiated, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Whether or not they've exited the cell cycle, you know, the outer layer, but I would love to see one going through mitosis. Yeah, you can even sort of, in some of these, just barely make out how in the nucleus there's some darker patches. Uh, likely being some of the more dense chromatin, like the, the nucleolus. A term we don't use in lab, and it's made me wonder, I've been second guessing myself whether that's an old term, since we kind of know what it is now, or not. All right, so unless there are specific requests and people really want to see more of the uh, caterpillar or more poking around with some uh, wasp larvae, ooh, you can see the like filaments there if I just kind of barely do that. Uh, I'm going to move on to some biotech stuff. So please, if you have a strong opinion, say it in chat. Otherwise, I'm going to move on after, I, after I'm done looking around at this stuff. You doubt these divide. Yeah, I had sort of the same feeling because um, this is just the very top layer. I was pretty sure those guys don't tend to divide. You call it the nucleolus in your lab? Okay, so that must be still the proper term. It's just like we know what it is now. So I wasn't sure if we still called it the nucleolus. I have never called it the nucleolus in my lab. But then again, we're all, always talking about specific domains of chromatin. You try to not to have strong opinions on Sundays. That's, you know, that's a probably a good way to go about it. 
Why is this one so big? Why are you so big? It's also a shame that this particular die kills off these cells. So I've killed off this part of myself, so they are not going to you know, be putting on any shows for us, unfortunately. Ah, uh, C. elegans germline cells have massive nucleoli. I see. Do they make a lot of ribosomes? Oh, oh, the germline stem cells. Or germline cells. Okay. So I'm just very interested in my own cells. I know I said I was going to move on, but look how cool they are. All right. Yeah, they are cool to look at now that I've completely lost where they went. Yeah, they are. One of these days I'll also get like a blood sample for myself or something, but I want to be careful with that. So ribosome biogenesis is the leading hypothesis as to why. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That would make sense. I mean, don't we have any reagents to, to block uh, ribosome biogenesis? Wouldn't that be a per fairly straightforward hypothesis to test? Although then again, does the structure form because of the biogenesis or does the biogenesis happen because of the structure? Eh. Okay. Scoot forward. Okay. Uh, you're used to seeing your blood as a set of numbers on a CBC result. You, you want to actually see what your blood looks like with your eyes. Yeah. Um, blood is a pretty cool tissue to look at. Um, Although, to some degree, it's also a little boring. I mean, they literally don't even have nuclei. So unless you get lucky and get to check out a like a white blood cell, you're not going to see much. It, it kind of just looks like red. Um, yeah, you're thinking of making a prepared slide of your blood. You just don't want to make the sample. Yeah, see, that's why I've uh, not done that on or off stream for stream, because it kind of... I don't know. It, it just kind of seems not good to encourage, like, hey, take a sample of your blood or anything like that. All right. So I have a pretty tight, tight, tight schedule today. Um, so I have to leave it four. But the other thing, so let's see. We did the parasitic wasps. Sad. Uh, but then about that biotech news, so there's two things that came up that I wanted to read about because um, they kind of related to some things that we sort of chatted about recently slash are always super interesting. You know, so scientists, scientists. Um, wait, nope, this is the wrong thing. Although this is related actually sort of to something we have talked about anyways. Uh, here it is. Biotech company wants to take human DNA, which is super vague, and create artificial embryos that could be used to harvest organs for medical transplants. Yikes. Uh, you would rather look at the blood under a microscope than do the MGK and Megan Fox blood drinking nonsense. 
And then me showing my bias hating on cells without chromatin. Yes, I'm extremely biased. And if you remember correctly, there aren't many or any good ribosome biogenesis inhibitors that don't come with a lot of caveats. That's fair. I'm anti-copepod and pro-chromatin. <laughs> We're seeing true colors. Yeah. That's that's fair. Anyways, um, I was gonna I wanted to look into this just a tiny bit on stream, just to see if this is like. So this headline was going around Reddit, and I even saw it like on not the local news, but I think I saw a headline from CNN. But for all I know, that's just like there's some news aggregator out there that broke the story. And now everyone's just copying. Um. So I want to see what they mean by take human DNA and create artificial embryos, whether that's cloning, something we talked about really easy, really uh, recently. And then, you know, that could be used to harvest organs for medical transplants. Uh, that is the, so that, first of all, this is a, this is a movie. I don't remember what the movie is called. What is that movie? Is it not Shutter Island? I swear it's like Island, something Island. The Island? Um, I guess spoiler alert, because this will spoil the movie. Um, island growing clones for organs. The Island, The Island. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it has a, you know, what's his face in it? Uh, Ewan McGregor. Oh, directed by Michael Bay. All right. Yeah. So this is like, this is the island. Uh, this feels like a startup company that hasn't actually done much of the work to be able to deliver on the promise. Oh, absolutely. Which is why I wanted to look into it. Um, so they want to replicate a successful mouse embryo experiment, but with human cells, which is an experiment I want to look up. Uh, <laughs> The company Renewal Bio. That just sounds like a company that's going to be sold for like a hundred million dollars someday. They want to use their technology to make humanity younger and healthier. Okay. The use of synthetic human embryos has sparked ethical concerns among the scientific community, as it should. All right. So. Blah, blah, blah. Scientists at the White, Weitzman's Molecular Genetics Department grew, quote, synthetic mouse embryos <laughs> in a jar. In a jar. I doubt that was in their methods. Without the use of sperm, eggs, or womb. According to a paper published in the journal Cell on August 1. All right. I am going to have to. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's nice. Straight to the straight to the article. That's fantastic. So let's actually look at the scientific article. You love a promise to make you quote younger. They buried the lead. They made trying their time travel. So that's uh, that's at the end there. I see you've probably read the article. <laughs> Clean out jam jar. Grow mouse. Well, maybe. I know I was just making fun of them, but we'll see. So post gastrulation. Synthetic embryos generated ex utero from mouse naive ESCs. I mean, we just call them fancier things, fancy things, but a lot of glassware is just jar. <laughs> true, true, but they didn't have to say jar. They could have said something to make it sound fancier. Okay, so let's thank you, graphical abstract. Let's see what they did. And then we'll actually go and look at the data a little bit. So they took naive ESCs, which in this case, I uh, don't quite know what they mean, except that you know they aren't specified for anything in particular. Um, so they do, oh wait, actually, hold on, this actually might be really cool. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't look at this beforehand. Oh, okay, so they took trophectoderm induction. So, okay, so they took cells. And then they had them do three things. One, stay the same. So that's the naive cells. Two, become the trophectoderm, which which becomes a set of uh, tissues later on. Um, and then 
and then the last one becoming primitive endoderm uh, via induction of something else. So that's the transient expression of uh, CDX2, which probably is a transcription factor. CD, CDX2. Yeah. Caudal type homeobox 2, that's a transcription factor. Uh, GATA4 is a transcription factor. So then they co-aggregate them. That's cool. So they put them all back together. An embryo is kind of just a couple cell types mixed together, but organized. So then they had self-assembly of egg cylinder shaped S embryos. Synthetic embryos, that's what it means. Okay, so not a jar, not a jar. They have an ex electronically controlled ex utero, ex utero culture device and EUCM conditions. Uh, I don't know what that means. Ex utero something something. Um, first of all, this is not, wait, this said uh, without, oh, without a womb, but it, it sounds like an artif artificial womb sort of thing. And then apparently they get, so they get self-assembly of, so these cells, just from this graphical abstract, self-assemble into what they want to be, which is an embryo, which is a very, very specific, uh, you know, shape. So down here on, on day four, you have very few cell types that are organized into a very simple shape. Ex utero culture medium. Thank you. So you get the uh, epiblast, which will actually become the embryo someday. And then you get the uh, extra embryonic tissues uh, up here at the top. So that becomes like the, the placenta. And then you get the, the green part is the visceral endoderm, I always forget what that's called. I think that more or less just becomes the, uh, like also extra embryonic tissue. I guess if I just follow this along, yeah, looks like it. And so they just provide the, the cells to make the embryo, the uh, extra embryonic tissue, and then that endoderm. That's cool. Okay, all right, actually I was pretty skeptical about the, uh, what they actually did based on this article, but the real article, like, okay, if they actually did this, that's cool. So, oh wow, lots of authors. What did they do? They did a lot of genomics. Or maybe they were characterizing this some other way. We don't want to read that. This is kind of what I want to see. Sorry. It's it's highlighting things. Does that mean I can click on it? No. Okay. I'll try not to put my mouse over it because otherwise it turns yellow. All right. So this is what they said before. Of course. Whoops. When I clicked on that image, it... When I clicked on that image, it tried to send an email to the image. The two spots said figure two on that email that just popped up. Um, so they take their naive ESCs. They do the inductions, like they said, or lack of inductions. They literally do put them together. They add uh, doxycycline to do something. I missed where that what that's inducing. But the, yeah, <laughs> nail two, image two. Um, but then these cells, wait, do we know this could happen? That's so cool. Like they have the images down here at the bottom, day zero, one, two. So in day two, they self-assemble already into the shape of a, I guess that's not a blastocyst. What's the word? Into an embryo. What? And then it just, whoa, okay. <laughs> so they have a static culture, then they put it on a shaker for a little bit. 
and then they put it into their uh, ex utero culture device, which has its own uh, uh, citation to it. Yeah, this is neat, but there's a bit of a step from this to organs. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm just actually surprised. I'm sure this this first couple steps takes a lot more than they're saying. Not saying. I'm sure they're saying stuff like that. I'm just not reading it. Uh, I guess I'm just sort of surprised that the uh, induction of these cell types is specific enough, and these cells are like robust enough that they 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 get plopped together in an upside down pyramid, and then they basically say like, "Hey, let's make a let's make an embryo." That is that is actually that is really cool. I find that so cool. So let's see. Oh, whoa. Why S? I'm sure. Oh, yolk sac. Okay. That's so cool. So then they, wow. Just seeing this device. Um, so they're, what they're showing are different stages of, of embryo development. So they show, show a natural embryo and then a synthetic embryo, the different stages of like approximate sa stages see oh you're right you're right it is a jar you are absolutely right micro it is a jar okay fine i was wrong it literally is a jar now i will argue it's it's attached to a big fancy a fancy machine but you're right they really did just grow them in a jar Ridiculous. Okay. Let's see what else. Then they do some characterization, make sure the embryos are good. Um, oh. post cast relation embryos properly recapitulate spatial expression patterns of tissues derived from all three germ layers. That's good. And then they show this again. I'm, I'm just kind of wondering, uh, I'm going to search. I'm going to have to do some control F, F-ing to try and see. I wonder if they let any of these grow. Like, when did they die? They, they must die at some point. Because, Micro, as you see, like, yeah, there's a bit of a step from this to organs. But let's say that that step is just letting this embryo grow to full, like, a full uh, uh, organism, right? Well, then, then you're pretty close to having organs. All right, so control F, death? No. Um, Okay, just wondering, what else should I search? How do I find whether or not they died? Died. Dead. Uh, incomplete. Failed? They only have one, they only have the word failed once. Sacrifice, yeah, sac. Re nope. You know, I'm sure if we, uh, I'm going to copy this and add it to the Discord. If people want to search through it with me later, get out of here. Absolutely can. Also, Manigard, I see your um, the the literature on the wasps that you contributed. Thank you for that. I'm definitely gonna look at that. Um, cool. Terminated. I'll start with term. Nope. Nope. 
Well, they don't say, they, you know, I feel like the biggest like slam dunk for this paper, which is, which would be if like, so this is figure four, if they had like a little figure five, oh, no, figure five, hold on. Okay, last figure. If they had this figure six, right? If they had a figure seven that was just a picture of like a happy little mouse that was created via this way. So actually that's pretty cool, but what is this? Okay, so I believe it. I believe the science behind it now. So that's that's good at least. Okay, the article kind of explains it for us. The replica embryos. Uh, oh, they're replicants. Um, could not develop into fully formed mice and therefore not real. Well, they're real. Whatever. Uh, however, scientists observed the synthetic embryos having a beating heart, blood circulation, the start of a brain, neural tube, and intestinal tract. All right. So, Hannah, the person who led the experiment, make sure that that person's an author. Um, no. Oh, yes. Senior author. I see. Uh, <laughs> fake mice. Oh, success of prolonged up to six day ex utero culture of normal mouse embryos from pre guest relation until late organogenesis. So something is failing. That's kind of interesting that they make it all the way through. It is kind of cool that they make it all the th way through gas relation and start forming some distinct tissues, even having beating hearts, but then fail later on. I, I, I will be interested to read this later to see if they have any ideas of, you know, like, why? Why did they fail? Okay, so the lead scientists uh, w is working to replicate the results with human cells, including his own. I feel like that's kind of jumping the, the gun there. I mean, this is a, this is basically a type of cloning, right? I mean, the cells are, you'd, so you, I guess what you would do is you take a, a, a cell line or a cell from yourself. Uh, you would try to induce it to go back into a pluripotent like state. So they were using embryonic stem cells. Uh, I don't know what we, I'm not really up on the human literature like what we can do with that, like he, with human stem cells. Uh, yeah, maybe do some more stuff with mice before you do that. Uh, absolutely. Because that's so, ugh, so, so what? Like, even if it's his own cells, it feels just so morbid to be like, oh yeah, I, uh, I made 30 tiny embryos of myself, clones of myself, and they all died. Like, that just seems so, I don't know. It seems icky. It feels gross in some way, um, especially with it's like yourself. It's, um, I, I am nowhere near this type of research, so I don't have to deal with this idea. But in terms of like human tissue, like obviously you need consent from whoever's donating a tissue for any, any sort of thing. But it feels like certain types of research, even if you are the donor, you probably shouldn't be doing the research on it yourself. Because then it starts, it feels gross in a way, especially when you're potentially literally cloning yourself. Eric Sung has something to do with it. <laughs> you're sure? Yeah. This is feeling very like, yeah. Also, why use your own? Uh, use a cell line that others can get so others can replicate it. Uh, exactly. Um, but first of all, why do it your own? Well, it's the Craig Venter explanation of like, well, it'd be cool if it was my tissue. It never goes well in TV shows. Eagle always leads to something horrible going wrong. I mean, I feel like the only... Like, horrible going wrong, I don't think this person will create like a genetic monster who will like escape the lab and terrorize humanity. 
but it can still feel gross that this person is like growing clones of themselves. And since they can't do it perfectly, they're killing clones of themselves. I don't know. It's a weird it's a weird line because like is that that clump of cells is not a mouse. So I don't know. Anyways, anyways, probably should stick with mice for the time being. The embryo is the bre <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the embryo is the best organ making machine and the best 3D bioprinter. We tried to emulate what it does. <laughs> Other experts say it will take significantly more research before synthetic human embryos are within reach. Uh yeah. <laughs> The embryo is the best organ making machine and the best 3D bioprinter. It, the human body is the best blood making machine. Like that's, yeah, he he really is. He's trying to do a a the island. So, well, hold on. This is this is wonderful. This is this I feel like this normally would belongs on Wednesdays, but we're going down this anyways. Oh, my screen disappeared. Oh, there it is. So the island, if you don't remember or haven't seen it, um it's technically true, but don't say it like that. Yeah, absolutely. What a bad sentence. Um, yikes. So The Island is a dystopian science fiction film. Um, it's basically that there is this company. Okay, see if this sounds familiar. There's this company that if you are rich enough, uh, will, what they say they do is they take some of your cells and they make a bank of organs. Like, so that if you as a rich person ever get sick or need a transplant or something, no problem. You crack open the vault, you take the like lungs that are sitting there waiting for you, and you're good to go, right? Okay, but the thing is, this company, what they don't tell the outside world is that growing organs by themselves doesn't work. It's for some dumb reason that doesn't make any scientific sense whatsoever. Um, so what they do secretly is they take the cells of the wealthy people and clone them into human beings with their own like you know likes dislikes personalities all that and they set them to live up in a a uh, i think an underground just some compound that's like completely germ free and uh ah uh, yeah each and they tell them each week one resident gets to leave the compound and live on the island by way of the lottery right there's some like they tell they lie to them say there's some place they get to go live if they win the lottery but in reality, what they're doing is harvesting these clones for their organs when their 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 DNA donor, whatever you want to call them, their parent needs an organ, um, which is like awful. And then a sci-fi action movie happens; they sort of figure this out. Um, basically, the clones are being lied to. The 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 people who are purchasing the clones don't know they're purchasing clones it sounds awful um oh that reminds you you wanted to recommend a low budget but interesting love it let me get my pen ready uh 60s sci-fi movie called the creation of the humanoids that's a very direct title the creation of the humanoids um, it's on YouTube. Cool. Uh, here, why don't I find it quick? And then I'll put it on the Discord. Maybe we can have a watch party sometime soon. I want to do more watch parties, but it's kind of tough because I don't really understand the uh, legality of that. But if it's on YouTube, that must that must mean that it's, uh, you know, copyright is up or something like that. Uh, follow follower goal discord movie night that's a good idea yeah
or maybe like a channel point goal or something like that right like to pick the movie or something like that i like it regardless uh so it's on youtube here we go sci-fi full movie google pixel 6a shush Think Blade Runner with absolutely no action. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Great. Now we do it right. Okay. So I'll I'll take this link and I'll put it to Discord. Uh, just as a reminder to myself and everyone else. Putting it in misc suggestions. Ooh. Awesome. I love it already. <laughs> Absolutely going to watch that. Um, oh, Hawk Moth. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, this, uh, this guy, this person. Actually, now I gotta look him up. Jacob Hanna. I'm positive he's a real scientist. I just just want to see what else he's up to, you know, just in case. All right. Publications. Oh, cute little mice. Uh, oh, wait, I've read this one before. Simulation of linker histone H1 drives chromatin condensation and restriction of embryonic cell fate identity. I've definitely read that before. Okay. Okay, I've actually done quite a bit. Not surprised. Just wanted to see if they were maybe like some kind of like serial grifter or something like that. Members, we don't really care about the members, although it is a big lab. Ah, medium-sized lab. Cool. Data and protocols. Ooh, they have a whole, they just have the protocol for the mouse, uh, ex utero mouse embryogenesis. Oh, it's just here, okay. So we can do this at home. What reagents do they need? Well, reagents, mouse. <laughs> uh, Homemade human umbra umbilical cords blood serum. All right, maybe not do this at home. Still, I'm, I'm actually really glad that they, they, you should, but you know, even, um, you know, high profile, where is it? Oh, I, I think I closed it. So even for high profile uh, images, images, high profile articles, uh, they don't always post their protocols like super cleanly. I am glad that they've very clearly taken the time to put this in a, a stepwise sort of protocol. You know, it's, it's better than nothing. Um, that that's at least good. So they can. So hopefully people will be able to recapitulate these results. Uh, you don't think that counts as a reagent? Wait, what? What specifically? There's a delay, so I'm not sure what you're talking about. You're talking about mice? Mice not being a reagent? Mice. <laughs> uh. Mice. Yeah, I feel like um, in at least Drosophila research, we have, we don't put mice or Drosophila under reagents. We have them as like a separate like uh, model organism line or something like that. Yeah, it does feel wrong to call a whole organism a reagent. Like maybe if it was a cell line, maybe, but yeah, like a whole mouse. Anyways, okay, so they seem, yeah, okay, they're fine. 
just maybe pull back a little bit on this hor organ harvesting bio printer stuff. Um, and they actually have this company, which I'm definitely going to search. Let's see. So, for example, um, MIT Tech Review reported that blood cells from the embryo could potentially be used to help boost immunocompromised systems. Maybe. You even list your yeast strain separate from reagents. Well, maybe mouse people do it different than the rest of us. Um, so they believe some of the world's most pressing problems are, oh, declining birth rates and fast aging populations? Does that sound wrong to everyone else? So declining birth rates is a sign of modernization. Uh, increased uh, education for women and increased uh, uh, freedoms and liberties, to just put it through broad strokes, for women decline birth rates because there's more choice in whether or not you start a family or not. So I don't see that necessarily as a bad thing. Um, and yes, exactly. Fast aging populations. I don't think we're suddenly aging faster. I think what they mean to say is, is just that the, the, the oncoming problem or the oncoming uh, difficulty of having a, a society where people do choose to have fewer children, which is just that later on the elderly in some societies might not be taken care of. So it's more like a bigger aged population, not a faster aging population. Okay, I maybe I don't know. This is this is the second thing that's phrased badly. To solve these complex and compounding issues, Renewal Bio aims to make humanity younger and healthy healthier by leveraging the power of the new stem cell technology. The website that I just opened reads. Okay. Um, the use of human clone, embryo clones for research has frequently raised ethical concerns from the scientific community, including the potential that synthetic embryos may experience pain or sentience. Um, that's from a paper that is probably just an opinion by George Church, friend of the stream, George Church. Uh, pain and, yeah, pain and sentience. I don't think so. Not at the embryonic stage. Yeah, what? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I think there are ethical concerns besides that, but, you know, your uh, your blastocyst is not, like, you know, thinking or anything like that. And, yeah, of course it is George Church. Uh, let me just search the word sentience. Sentience. A key concern of the commission that adopted the 14-day rule was to prevent the possibility of embryos experiencing pain or sentience in the context of an experiment. Okay. Oh, wait. Skimming, skimming. So... Wait, there. This this article is misquoting this paper. P.S. Yeah, I think I think this this paper is. Okay, yeah, I think this I think this is a uh, sort of misquoting that. It kind of looked like they were talking about like, you know. Yes, these are a concern, but maybe the 14-day thing is, like, not quite the right time. Yeah, because at 14 days, at, even closely after 14 days, a human embryo is not going to be able to feel pain and definitely does not have any uh, sentience. And the problem of, like, what pain is, is, like, that's tricky. Because is it, like, would a cell react to being poked? Uh, maybe. But, like... 
does the do the complex neurological structures exist that take input and and perceive it as something harmful the way we do that that probably doesn't exist for quite a while even in a human uh you know developing embryo anyways um hannah told mit review that he could potentially get around these ethical concerns oh dear <laughs> by creating synthetic human embryos with no lungs no heart or no brain what uh, this, this he's he's really trying to sell his company. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not better. That's not better at all. <laughs> it's it's. Ugh. So I was just um, leaning over to look. Here. Hold on, we're we're gonna go back to something quick. The 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 um the poor caterpillar has like gotten up and it's eating a leaf while still covered in those pupa. Now I feel extra bad. Uh, maybe they should just call them something else at that point, like not embryos. Yeah, probably. And how the hell will the embryo? How the hell is the embryo going to grow without a heart? Uh, good question. <laughs> this person needs a dedicated science communicator. Absolutely, they are. They're not doing in themselves any uh, like any favors with that. Uh, the way that would have been workshopped in a group. Very, <laughs> yeah, it's it sounds very like a, very much like an episode of Veep. Anyways, yeah. Oh, my poor caterpillar, <laughs> trying to eat a leaf. You know, I think I am going to take some time. Oh, oh, yeah, Manogard, you're the expert. You're now the resident ex expert in this. The BRCA virus has converted its metabolism to serve the needs of the wasp. The poor thing is eating, and the eating to kill keep its killers going. But so they're no longer like taking nutrients from it. So I wonder if I very carefully pick off the uh, the wasp uh, cocoons, and then get it some like fresh greens. I wonder if it will survive, maybe. I'm really tempted to try it out and just see if I can get 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 the best of both worlds. I get my moth and I get the hundreds of wasps. Okay. Sorry. I just noticed it moving off to the side and I had to I had to check it out. Okay. Um um um, um Yeah, okay. I'm going to need to see this 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 ugh, renewal dot bio. Oh. Welcome to the website. <laughs> we can email them. Info? Should I report abuse? <laughs> Problem. The humanity is getting older and sicker. Citation needed on that one. I mean, that's not true. Okay. You're going to guess that the virus has, has messed it up too much. I mean, yeah, probably, but I still want to try. Maybe I can get some, like, interferon or something. Yeah, we aren't getting sicker. But let's see what they say. Um, since the turn of the century, developed nations have seen a clear trend. Declining birth rates. Again, that's probably not a bad thing outright. Fast aging populations. That doesn't make sense. With significant socioeconomic implications, this trend threatens to upend health systems. Okay, maybe, but I feel like there's more proactive ways to get around an aging population. Uh, health systems, retirement programs, and workforces across the globe. Okay, I would agree with this sentence if instead of this, what they just meant was like unequal, uh, I don't even know what to say unequal distribution between 
aging population and and the like new population the opposite that's why we're getting older and older yeah yeah exactly okay uh, at the beginning of life, it is, this is shown by a 5 to 10% increase in infertility treatments by U.S. couples each year. No. Also citation needed. Towards the end of life, these issues are manifesting. Okay, wait, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Back to this. Uh, I do know that infertility treatments are becoming more common, but that's because people are choosing to have children older and might need infertility treatments. Uh, yeah, 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 Manogard, exactly. And uh, an increase in fertility treatments can be explained by better insurance coverage, availability, and less stigma. Exactly, yeah. I mean, yeah. Anyways, towards the end of life, these issues are manifesting in fast aging populations. Okay, I think this is like poor wording of what they mean Okay, I know what they're talking about. There's this like thing where it's like, what is this called? Hold on, I gotta look at this. Um, it's like a population birth, death, moving graph. It's like where you graph the number of people in like a cohort. And it's just that we are, we are heading into a time where a lot of more people are gonna be old and dying than being born so yeah okay this is for this is for brazil this is for brazil but this is what i'm talking about um sort uh sort of where this like big hump would show up like later because old yeah age group proportions are shifting exactly um Uh, oh, sorry, I'm also reading micro. Unless you're here in Denmark where your sperm quality is much worse than the rest of the EU and you don't know why. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I hadn't heard that. Anyways, um, yeah, so there's uh, shifts in demographics. Exactly. So, you know, in here in the U.S., we have the, like the baby boomers, this like huge explosion of like of, of numbers of babies being born uh, post-World War II. That is a big cohort that is all aging, more or less all at once. And it's just that we're going to go through this awkward period where, like, there's going to be a lot of old people and not that many young people. But it should, if everything stayed the same, I think the way that a demographer would describe that is it would become more stable over time. So let's actually look at a more stable. So this is Canada. Nope, show me that. So they're more equal, but it's still lower. I don't know. It's just like, yeah, that's what we need robots for. Yeah, it's it's like we uh, we need robots and also just a more robust health care and retirement system in the U.S. This is all like U.S. based opinions. So I think what they might mean is that there is a cohort coming up of a large group of people who are who are going to age into the retirement and higher health care cost and need bracket. Um, you're watching a QI once where Sandy Tox Toxvig, I, I can never say her name, uh, talked about sperm being a big Danish export. I don't know if that's a joke because I see, Micro, you say that, yeah, you paradoxically, paradoxically, Export a lot. Yeah, yeah, Manogard, I don't want to Google that either. So if someone can explain that, that'd be super nice. Okay, but Micro, whose or what's sperm are you talking about? Um, yeah, yeah, then in the U.S., blah, blah, blah. Solution, a bio platform to renew human health. Yeah, okay, well... I think they just want they just want people to look at their company, I think. I think that's pretty clear. I mean the science is real, right? But they're 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 really pushing the uh what it means and I don't think it's uh 
I don't think it's going to do what they think it's going to do, basically. Uh, oh, it's human. Uh, it mentioned in part because the laws allow for anonymous donation. Aren't, aren't uh, people in Denmark on average pretty tall, too? And I think when it comes to, like, sperm donor uh, selection, tall people or tall, yeah, tall people are pretty up there in what people want. Uh, anonymity. Don't want to Dane, Dane Blaine. Oh, you Googled it for all of us. Apparently a lot of, I see. So anonymity is kind of the answer, it sounds like. Anonymity. And I'm going to search uh, average Danish height. Ah, okay. Here. Do they have a graph? So... Let's go down to one. Netherlands. They're tall. Yeah, Denmark is also a lot of tall people. So maybe it's also choice too. You're just above average. Above average for, for, for Denmark or for the world? If Norway can have a seed bank, then Denmark can have a sperm bank. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, um, I am. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. But I also wanted to mention this, just because this was back in the news. So we, I think we kind of talked about this in terms of like mammoths, and I had heard that uh, there's like one lab or one company that really wants. Yeah, this did take a turn. See, this is why I need to make my uh, my rabbit hole counter raid, for stream. Raid, raid. Thank you. I will remember to raid because I am winding down. But I did want to mention the Tasmanian tiger thing because, uh, you know, I'll save this for another time. Uh, just because the animal that they're proposing to act as surrogates is like a little, like a little tiny, like it looks like a little tiny mouse thing, and thylacines were quite large. Um, but I think the thylacine uh, genome was sequenced not not too long ago. I'm sure it would say. I'll save this for another time. Okay, who should we raid though? Who should we raid? I I can't just have what that can't be right. Science is an arm. Well, they're not coming up. MST3K. The only channel that I follow that's on is MST3K. That can't be right. Okay, I gotta go to Twitch actual and see if it's just being the dashboard is being weird right now. Okay, yeah. Anyone have a suggestion for who to raid? Let's see, who's on science and technology? Yeah, no one you follow is on right now? Me neither. Ooh, okay, hold on. Someone is talking about dinosaurs, and I've been trying to find someone to talk about dinosaurs with. Maybe if we raid them, and they actually like... Oh. Ah, it is not in English. The only. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah, dinosaurs, but Dice and Dinosaur um, does not appear to stream in English. So, <laughs> anyone else have any other suggestions? Otherwise, we can just raid MST3K. I mean, they always have movies on, so that's always fun to watch. Let me look for like 30 more seconds. 
maybe they stream in English because some things on their channel are in English. I just don't want to like pop in with a bunch of English speakers and force them to change. Yeah, no one, not not many people on in a uh, science and technology at the moment. Oh God, oh, it's me. <laughs> I just came upon my stream, that scared me. Not as much as that scream though. Okay. No one seems to have strong opinions and I can't seem to find anybody. So we are going to just go ahead and and uh, raid MST3K. So remember on Wednesday, uh, I will be here with Nascent Novice to talk about uh, some vampire stuff. So I gotta learn a bunch of, I have to learn a bunch of sciencey things so that I'm properly prepared. Why are we still on that? Uh, so that should be fun. Um, otherwise, thank you all for coming. This was a lot of fun. Stick around for the raid. We're gonna go to MST3K. I don't know what they're watching. So, anyways, have a good rest of your Sunday, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Which streamer of all the ancient knowledge? Doctor. Bomb. The experiments of Doctor. Bang! I'm simply a scientist. He's a research biologist. What kind of biology? Molecular. 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 An honest researcher. Performing laboratory experiments. I am detecting a quantum flux in your cellular RNA. What does that mean? I do not know. I will have to analyze these readings. Your temporal RNA.